man in the house tonight. Amen. We're going to ask the Lord to be with us in our service. Amen. Before we do that, though, I don't know if you were here for the message today, but what a message we heard. Amen. What an incredible message. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. We serve a good God. I said we serve a miracle working God. My 16-year-old nephew sitting right up here just a little over two and a, half, two and a half weeks ago was hit by a car that was going about 30 miles an hour. He was launched over the hood of the car, landed on his head. He went into convulsions, and he's sitting here tonight, a walking, talking, breathing miracle. God is able to do all. I said we serve a God that's still in the business of doing the miraculous. Can we praise him right now and begin to lift him up? Father, we've come here to magnify your name. Lord, we've come here to glorify you. You deserve all honor. God, all praise belongs to you. And God, we will do so in one mind, in one accord, and with one voice. We worship you tonight, and we glorify you. Let's worship him. Lord, we give you glory.
of all the people in the Los Angeles area. Heaven is looking right here because we're not just singing, but we are lifting up holy hands. We are living a holy life. And when we praise God, it's for real. And heaven is touched by our praise. Hallelujah. Let's praise him with all of our heart tonight. Everybody sing it. There is joy in the house of the Lord. There is joy in the house of the Lord. There is joy. There is joy. There is joy in the house of the Lord. There is joy in the house of the Lord. There is joy. There is joy. Oh, there is joy in the house of the Lord. There is joy in the house of the Lord. There is joy. Lift him up, lift him up, lift him up. 
name of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God.
He's worthy. He's worthy. you Lord we thank you Lord and we praise you for your greatness for your goodness for your goodness and grace and mercy and kindness where would I be you only know I'm glad you see through eyes of love a hopeless case
Jesus, I love you, I love you. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Because you can. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Because you can. It feels good to come together, and it feels good to worship God together. Amen. Before you're seated, just shake someone's hand next to you and let them know that you're glad they are here tonight, and you may be seated. Praise God. Thank you, worship team, for worshiping God, for your prayerful time invested in blessing the name of the Lord with us tonight. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
As you are seated, I want to go over tomorrow's schedule. I want everyone to be aware of what's taking place tomorrow. Our Saturday is scheduled tomorrow at 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Continental breakfast will be served in the fellowship hall right here to my left. And then from 9.30 to 10, prayer right here in the sanctuary. From 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock, we will have four presenters present strategic growth uh, concepts and initiatives for the SoCal District. That's going to be very exciting, a great opportunity, amen, so we can see the growth that God has given us here in the SoCal District. And then at 11 a.m., we'll begin our elections and business, and at that point in time, the ladies will be dismissed for their breakout session, and they will come back at 1 o'clock. At 1 o'clock, we will have a combined session with uh, Pastor Mark Johnson. Amen. And he will minister to all of us. And didn't you enjoy that ministry today? Thank you for speaking your heart today, Brother Johnson. That was incredible. Praise God. And then after we have a great time in the Lord around 3 o'clock, maybe just before that, there will be a complimentary lunch served right here on the church parking lot. I believe it's a taco cart that is coming. And so we're going to have a good time. Amen. In the word of God and eating some tacos tomorrow. Praise God. It's going to be a great thing. I also want to mention, too, uh, for the ladies' board, for the ladies' board, right after we conclude uh, the ordination service and after the altar call, if you can meet uh, Pastor Hodges, our district superintendent, to my left in this room right here, if the ladies' board can meet just for a few minutes, and he'll discuss some important things with you right after our service is concluded tonight. Praise God. We welcome all of our guests here to our district conference here in SoCal. I know that we have... Um, we have <clears throat> Brother Jonathan Elms and his wife here, Evangelist. Amen. We're glad you're here. This is the nephew of Pastor Bernard Elms, and we're glad you're here. Why don't you stand and say a quick word? Amen. God bless you. Praise God. And also, um, they have uh, Pastor Mark Johnson, our North Central Region or regional presbyter officiating our business and ministering here also with his wife let's give him a great hand of appreciation we're glad you're here in the SoCal district thank you for being here with us praise God amen and Pastor Sargent is going to come and introduce a special evangelist amen thank you brother Lopez it was probably 1982 I was living with my parents because I was only about three years old in the state of Idaho it was Thanksgiving day and we decided while the ladies were cooking dinner to run up to the mountains 30 miles outside of town and do some tubing for the day and along with us were missionaries Mike and Miriam Sponsler brother Sponsler does not want me to tell the story but I'm going to anyways while we were tubing, my dad and my youngest brother were walking up the hill when Brother Sponsor was following close behind me as we fled down the hill as fast as we could. He reached out, gently tapped the tube that my three-year-old brother was holding. It spun my brother around and broke his leg. This is a great way to introduce a missionary. Some of the finest people you'll ever meet in your life are missionaries Mike and Miriam Sponsler to the country of Argentina for over 25 years now. They have served as missionaries for the United Pentecostal Church. I give a big salute to every missionary who sacrifices to get the gospel across the world. Amen. Brother Sponsor, would you stand? Just leave a brief word of testimony. Don't tell the other side of the story. Thank you. 
They have only been in the SoCal district for one week. That's all that they're here for. So please introduce yourself to them. If you're a pastor, take them on as a PIM. Let's get them back to the nation of Argentina. Amen. Also during the tomorrow schedule, the 9.30 to 10 a.m. Uh, prayer and devotion, Brother Danny um, Aber will be speaking, uh, speaking a word to us in the morning. And so we're thankful for that. Praise God. We look forward to that. Amen. Why don't we stand together? We're going to have our ushers come down, and we want to take up an offering tonight. We want to be a blessing to this meeting. Also, to our guest speakers, we want to give them a love offering. Thank them for all that they do and all that they give us. Praise God. And so, uh, here this week. So, let's pray and ask God to bless this offering. Amen. As we have been greatly blessed already here at our conference. Lord Jesus, we love you. Thank you, God, for your spirit that is in this place. Your power and demonstration that is with us all week, God. And I pray tonight that you'd bless the gift and the giver. Let your will be done, God. Continue to do great things as you have already in the SoCal District. Thank you, God, for your divine favor. In the name of Jesus, we ask and pray. Amen and amen. Thank you for standing. God bless you. You may be seated. Renew, restore, revive your church and make us whole. Take us to a place we've never seen before You've done the impossible We've seen our mountains do before Your word is unstoppable With expectations we truly are believing God for greater things. Oh, magnify the Lord. Praise God. We're believing Him for great things. Our God's a great God. Our God's a great God. The universe cannot contain Him. The only space He's limited is between our two ears. God, we believe You. God, we trust You. God, we thank You. How many here tonight are glad to be called by God to the SoCal District? I'm glad to be called of God, the pastor to reach these people, to do a work. Praise God. Amen. Our uh, district strategic growth leadership group that I'll introduce in a moment asked if I would speak tonight 
and share with you the beginnings. This is the beginnings of a new strategic growth initiative for the SoCal District. And so we are going to do that at this time. Amen. Thank you all for being here tonight. Uh, I hope all of our credentialed ministers and even maybe more will join us tomorrow for our wonderful sessions and our elections and then also to hear uh, Brother Johnson. Thank you again, Brother Johnson. Today's message was outstanding. We appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. Amen. I'd like to turn your attention to one passage of Scripture before you're seated tonight. In Luke chapter 19 and verse number 10. Luke chapter 19 and verse number 10. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Jesus is saying this himself, about himself. He said, I have come to seek and save that which was lost. Amen. Lord God, bless your word tonight. Bless your initiative tonight to grow, to reach, to go. In Jesus' name, 26 million people, souls that are our responsibility, Christ, to fulfill your great commission. In Jesus' name, we praise you and we thank you. Amen, amen. You may be seated. God richly bless you. Brother David Bernard, our General Superintendent of the United Pentecostal Church International, recently published the latest statistics for the year 2018 that just closed. Currently in the UPCI, we have 10,500 credentialed ministers in North America. We have 4,800 churches in the United States and Canada that includes approved daughter works and preaching points. Around the world, we have 42,000 works in 194 nations out of 210 nations and in 35 territories with a worldwide constituency of 4 point million people. Let's thank God for what he's doing in helping the United Pentecostal Church grow to reach the world. Praise God. The motto of the United Pentecostal Church International is the whole gospel to the whole world by the whole church. I usually add my little tagline on that, and I say, by any means. By any means. Let's just reach everybody we can, however we can. Here in our SoCal district, we do represent North America's largest harvest field when you consider population. 26 million souls that we are responsible for in the SoCal District. That stretches north of Santa Barbara from the Pacific Ocean on the west to Mexico on the south to Arizona on the east, taking in Clark County, Nevada. We are responsible for 26 million souls. We started in the year 2008 with 76 churches and 160 ministers. In 10 years, we thank God, in the last 10 years, we have planted 30 new churches. We thank God for that. 30 new churches planted in the last 10 years. To God be the glory. Today, our current count of record is 105 churches and 235 ministers in the SoCal District. Let's thank God for that growth. We are still working on numbers and statistics, but according to our best uh, estimates based on numbers that we have received from our churches, we have a constituency, and I'm going to go conservative here, we have a constituency of more than 20,000 people. The actual number that we have right now is over 24,000, but again, we're still gathering numbers. So we'll use the number 20,000 for constituents to be conservative. But again, the task before us is monumental to reach 26 million people. Jesus told us why he came. He, of course, is God in flesh. He told us his primary mission on earth was to seek and to save that which was lost. Seeking represents evangelism. Saving represents discipleship. After his resurrection, what are they to do now that Jesus Christ God in bodily form, who came to seek and save the lost, but he's no longer here. He's ascending back into heaven. Immediately following his resurrection, with the understanding, though the disciples at the time didn't have this understanding fully, 
but we certainly do with perfect 2020 hindsight, that we now are the body of Christ remaining on the earth. So while Jesus resurrected and then ascended subsequent to that, he now sent his spirit to live within us, and so we now are the body of Christ members in particular. Therefore, if his primary mission was to seek and to save the lost, evangelism and discipleship, it stands to reason his mission has not changed. Until everyone that has been sought has been found and all the lost have been saved, his mission has not changed. So our mission on earth is to seek and save the lost, evangelism and discipleship. In Mark chapter 16, verse 15, this is what Jesus said to his disciples immediately following his resurrection. He said, go ye, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Go. He was leaving and he left us to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. In SoCal, we are in a unique position. This is becoming increasingly true across North America, but it's been true for a long time in SoCal. You don't have to go across the seas to reach all the nations. You just have to go across the street to reach all the nations. What an opportunity, but what a responsibility. The challenge is great because the harvest fields truly are white and ripe already to harvest. Jesus said in Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20, Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them or discipling them to to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Jesus said this is your mission And I'm with you. It is a co-mission. It's God and man. It's Jesus and the church. Praise God. It's the ascended body of Christ. Amen. And the redeemed body of Christ that is here on earth. We are commissioned to go. To teach all nations. Baptize. Amen. Disciple. Praise God. This is our mission. Jesus' prayer request in John 17, 21. That they all may be one. That they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee. That they also may be one in us. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. How are we going to get the world to believe in Jesus Christ? By being one. When we become one, the world will believe, praise God, that God has sent us with a salvation message to them. This lets us know this is not going to happen alone. No one church can accomplish the task. There's not a single church among us that can reach 26 million people. No one pastor, preacher, evangelist, teacher can do this task alone. No one among us can preach to 26 million people or reach or teach or baptize 26 million people. Maybe that's why there's no independent Pentecostals in the book of Acts. Just saying, just speculating. But it doesn't matter to us because we are not independent. We are the United Pentecostals. We're the United Pentecostals. Praise God. My Bible says that one with God's always a majority. My Bible says that if one can put a thousand to flight, two can put ten thousand to flight. What can two with God do? Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we launched our district, as you know, with a cornerstone of prayer, with a cornerstone of doctrine. We truly are apostolic in doctrine. We are Pentecostal in experience. We are holiness in lifestyle. And we must always remain evangelistic in mission. And so we had our first strategic strategy, growth strategy meeting in in, uh, November of 2017. And then we had our second one in November of 2018. If you were part of either one of those meetings, would you please stand? If you were in either one of those meetings, would you please stand? Every man and woman that was in one of those meetings, would you please stand? It's going to reflect probably a good percentage of this congregation. 
thank you very much. And there are many more that are not here tonight that were in those meetings. Those meetings consisted of our district board and spouses, consisted of all our district elected leaders to uh, heads of, of ministries and their spouses. And this last time, we also added uh, our executive uh, North American missions team to that, to that mix. And also, if there was a leader that could not be there for some reason, we asked for the secretary of that ministry or a representative to be there. And this is a growing, expanded team. We want everybody involved as much as possible. And so we're going to be expanding even further. We'll be sharing more with that about that with you in our sectional conferences. But in these two meetings, I'm going to introduce to you just the beginnings of what is coming out of these meetings. And it's a work in progress. It's a work in progress. But we came out of this last meeting convinced that we must focus on this. We must focus on going, growing, and gathering together. That we must go together, we must grow together, and we must gather together in order to reach 26 million souls. I'm going to bring you tonight just three points of our strategic growth initiative. Just three points. Tomorrow we'll elaborate a little bit more on some of these. And at our section conferences, we're going to elaborate even more. But let me introduce you with just three strategic points. Number one, number one, we will have, we will have established a point of light in every town, that's the biblical term, every census-designated place, every city and every CDP by the end of 2020. We will have turned on a light in every town. Let me tell you what that actually means. What it means is we're not going to wait. We don't have time. It's, it's, it's the 11th hour. So we don't have time to wait until we can plant a church in every city. We're going to continue endeavoring to plant as much as we can. But we can't wait just for that. So at this conference, we are officially enlisting every single church, 105 of you that currently exist, we are listing you to adopt a city, a town, a census-designated place. We're looking for a church for every city, a church for every town. This is a mandate of Mark chapter 1, verse 38. Listen to what Jesus, listen to what Jesus is instructing to the apostles. Let us go into the next towns, that I may preach there also, for therefore for therefore came I forth. Let us go into the next towns. It's not enough to look at the town that God's called you to. you got to look about going into the next town. And the next town. And the next town. And the next town. Praise God. We've got examples of that happening right now. We have church planters who are already going into the next town. Jerry Menchaca is one of those in Santa Barbara. He's already going into the next town. It's not literally the next town. It's probably three or four towns over, truth be told. But, but he's reaching out, and he's got a group of people. They're already meeting there. We've got to turn a point of light on in every city, town, and CDP, since it's designated place. The total estimated population of SoCal District is 26 million. The total estimated population with a church or a point of light that we currently have identified in their town or CDP is 16,550,000. So we have reached with points of light, we have reached 63% so far of the 26 million if we use that measurement. The number of CDPs, which includes cities, towns, census designated places, the number of CDPs, I'm going to call them towns because that's Jesus' word and the Bible word from Mark 138. So from now on, I'll endeavor to call them towns. Whether they're a city, whether they're a CDP, I'll call them towns. So the number of towns that we need to reach and turn a light on in the SoCal district is 446. 446 towns. The number of towns with a church or point of light is 156. So the percentage of towns with a church or point of light is 35%. We now have, that we know of, a point of light in 35%. Maybe that number will go up 
as some of you help us realize we actually have points of light in other towns that we're currently unaware of. Hopefully that's the case. The number of towns with a church is 118. The percentage of towns with a church is 26%. Now here's a list of the top 20 towns with no church listed currently in the 2019 UPCI directory. Number one, Irvine, California, 229,000 people. Number two, Paradise, Nevada, 223,000 people. Number three, Fontana, California, 201,000 people. Number four, Huntington Beach, California, 173,000 people. Number six, Thousand Oaks, 128,000 people, no churches. Number seven, Enterprise, Nevada, 124,000 people. Number eight, Victorville, California, 119,000 people. Number nine, East Los Angeles, California, 117,000 people. Number 10, Costa Mesa, California, 112,000 people. Number 11, Carlsbad, California, 112,000 people. Number 12, Inglewood, California, 111,000 people. Number 13, Marietta, California, 106,000 people. Number 14, Burbank, California, 105,000 people. Number 15, Jerupa Valley, California, 97,000 people. Number 16, Carson, California, 93,000 people. Number 17, Santa Monica, California, 91,000 people. Number 18, Westminster, California, 91,000 people. Number 19, San Marcos, California, 87,000 people. Number 20, Chino, California, 84,000 people. Many more, but those are the top 20. We've got a large task before us. I pray tonight somebody feels the call, the burden, the passion, the challenge to reach into another town. Here are the top 20 that have no church and no point of light so far as we know at this point. Number one, Paradise, Nevada, 223,000 people. Number two, Fontana, California, 201,000 people. Number three, Thousand Oaks, California, 128,000 people. Number four, Costa Mesa, California, 112,000 people. Number five, Carlsbad, California, 112,000 people. Number six, Inglewood, California, 111,000 people. No church, no point of light. Number seven, Burbank, California, 105,000 people. Number eight, Santa Monica, California, 91,000 people. Number nine, Westminster, California, 91,000 people. Number 10, San Marcos, California, 87,000 people. Number 11, Newport Beach, California, 86,000 people. Number 12, Hawthorne, California, 85,000 people. Number 13, Hemet, California, 81,000 people. We do have a church that's listed Hemet, but it's actually just outside those city limits. Number 14, Chino Hills, California, 77,000 people. Number 15, Upland, California, 75,000 people. Number 16, Apple Valley, California, 71,000 people. Number 17, Linwood, California, 70,000 people. Number 18, Camarillo, California, 66,000 people. Number 19, San Clemente, California, 64,000 people. Number 20, Laguna Niguel, 64,000 people. Again, many more. These are the top 20 that have no church and no point of light that we know of at this point point. If you know you've got a point of light in one of these, make note of that. Tomorrow we're going to ask for those. We want to complete our statistics here. We're working on an interactive map. It's going to come up on the screen at this time. We appreciate Brother Michael Garcia working very hard on this. Currently, this map has every single church listed, where it's at, every single point of light listed that we know of. So every church, every daughter work, every preaching point that we are aware of is listed on this interactive map, when you click, including a designation of Spanish churches as well, Spanish language churches. When you click on the particular identifiers on this map, it will pop up with the individual uh, church information, contact information, address, and so forth. We're going to continue adding to that so to have website information, so forth and so on. Tomorrow, 
we're going to utilize this interactive map. If you notice the green, uh, the, the, the large green areas, those are the populated areas. Those are population uh, symbols, those large green areas. Tomorrow, we will have a list that we will hand out to every minister that will show every town or CDP needing a point of light. And we're asking for churches, we're asking for pastors and ministers to please adopt a town that does not have a point of light. And by the end of 2020, let's have a point of light in every town in the Southern California District. Can you say amen? You say, that's only two years. Yeah, that's only two years. But guess what? Acts 19.10 says, all Asia heard the word. That's the certified gospel in the space of two years. They did it without technology. They did it without modern travel, any modern means of communication. They did it. But they did it through their passion, and they did it through God. Amen. And we're going to do it the same way. We got the technology. We got the tools. Amen. We just need the people to have a passion. And we got a God who wants to see us accomplish this mission. So our mission, our theme, we're resonating around go to grow. The word go is mentioned in the Bible 1,352 times. 1,352 times. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to establish a point of light in every town in Southern California. Now that really is up to every pastor and church. It's up to every pastor and church to accomplish that. A point of light in every town in the Southern California district. The second thing we're going to accomplish, we're going to accomplish reaching all 26 million people with the Acts 238 message of salvation experience. How are we going to accomplish that? The word go is mentioned 1,352 times in the Bible. I like to play with numbers. I like to just sometimes see what numbers reveal to us. And so I took this number, 1,352, and I divided it by 365. There are 365 days in a year. When I divided 1352 by 365, it came out to 3.7. 3.7. Remember that number. 3.7. Remember I said earlier that we have a constituency. This is our conservative estimate of 20,000 people. 20,000 people. All right? Let's go more conservative. You know, Queen of Sheba said the half has not been told. So let's assume that half of the 20,000 will not get on board. So let's just take half of that number 20,000. Let's take the number 10,000. 10,000. If you got your calculator out and you calculated 10,000 and you divide that by two years, they reached all Asia in the space of two years. Could we reach 26 million in two years by the end of 2020? Divide that 10,000 by two years, that's 730 days. And it comes out to, it comes out to 26 million, 20, 10, I'm sorry, 10,000, let's go back. 1,352 divided by 365 equals 3.7. 10,000 people witnessing to 3.7 people a day would reach all 26 million in less than two years. Think about that. It's actually humanly possible. If each of 10,000 people would say, every day on average, I'm going to be a witness to at least, on average, 3.7 people, we would reach, we could reach, all 26 million in less than two years. Years. So the first product we're going to put into your hands, everybody's going to receive one right now, ushers, if you would help me, and hand out a connection card. Now, this is version 1.0, okay? But everybody's going to receive one of these. Tomorrow, we'll have quantities for you to take back to your home church. And probably by uh, section conferences, we'll have version, version 2.0 probably out by then. 
But this is a connection card. This is brand new. You're the first ones to receive this. It's an opportunity for people to witness to someone when they're not from their own town or area. Now, if you're witnessing to someone and they're from your own town or area, give them your church card. Invite them to your church. Try to get them to your home group. Try to get them to your prayer group. Try to get them to your, your youth ministry, to whatever. But how many know, living in Southern California, with 26 million people, and who knows how many people are coming and going at any given time with tourism and everything else, all right? How many know that many people you witness to, they're not even from your area? They're not even from your town, right? That happens as often as not, doesn't it? You want to give them an invitation to your church, they say, well, I live too far away. This connection card has a scan code on the back of it. It says, locate a place of worship. When they scan that with their phone, it will pop up with a church locator. And they can put in their zip code or their city, and it will pop up with the nearest churches to them, nearest united Pentecostal churches to them. Is that cool or what? All right. So you're all taking one with you tonight. Tomorrow we'll have a quantity. You can take them back to your home church. Now, this is not to replace your church cards. Or it's to supplement what you're already doing in your local church ministry. I can't tell you how many times I'm different parts of the country. Witness to somebody. I don't know where to send them, where to tell them to go. I'm going to carry a connection card with me from now on. This will work nationwide, by the way. Every church in North America. Your church is in here, Brother Johnson. If somebody's from your town in Elkhart, Indiana... They'll get one of these cards, they'll find your church. Isn't that awesome? Amen. Praise God. This is a connection card. Amen. Version 1.0. Let's give it up for the team that produced our connection card. <laughs> Praise God. The third point that I want to share with you tonight, and the final point that we're rolling out initially, just introducing you to our new strategic growth initiative. The third point. Now, point number one, a point of light in every city. It takes the pastor and the church to do that. Point of light in every town. It takes the pastor and church. Point number two, all 26 million hearing the Acts 2.38 message of salvation and experience. It takes 10,000 members to do that. It takes all the members to do that. So the pastor and church does number one. takes all the constituency to do number two. Number three, it's going to take God to do this one. It's going to take God to do this one. This is one we cannot accomplish. But my Bible says this. If one plants and another waters, God will give the increase. Praise God. I don't have to worry about the increase. My job's to plant and my job's to water. God's job is to give the increase. I believe the Bible. Praise God. Amen. So point number three is together. We are going to go together. We're going to grow together. And we are going to gather together. God's given us a prophecy. I don't fully know what all it, how it's going to be fulfilled, but he's given us a prophecy of more than a million. More than a million. If Ethiopia can have a million so revival, if the Philippines can have a million so revival, SoCal District can have a million so revival. I know what some may be thinking. Are you kidding me? You're at 105 churches and 20,000 plus constituents. You're going to have a million soul revival? Yeah. You ever heard about David and Goliath? You ever heard about Gideon? You ever heard about giants are rarely if ever on the side of God in the Bible. Praise God. Amen. He's always with a minority and we're a minority district. No doubt about that. In more ways than one. Hallelujah. Amen. But if God be for us, who can stand against us. Praise God. So this one, we're going to believe God for the impossible. Because with God, all things are possible. Now listen carefully. Luke chapter 14, verse 23. Luke chapter 14, verse 23. And the Lord said to the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. Compel them to come in. we got to start getting passionate about this thing. Compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. Praise God. God is bringing us a revival for a harvest. Amen. For a harvest. Praise God. 
Our strategic growth initiative in the SoCal District wants to bring resources, tools, and helps to the local church. Think about this. If every local church doubles, we will double our churches. If every local church doubles, we will double our churches. We'll go from 105 churches to 210, not because we cut this church and have to make two. No, because that church doubled, praise God, and then that church planted another church, and it doubled and planted another church. It's the will of God for us to multiply, to grow. Praise God. Hallelujah. If the Lord was willing to save Sodom for 1% of her population, and, and he was, he was willing to save Sodom for 1%, of her population. I wonder if the Lord would be willing to save your town for 1% of the population. I don't know what the population of your town is, but you know it. Do the math. What would 1% of the population of your town be? Why don't you make that your next church goal? Now, coincidence is not in God's vocabulary. It's not. It's not in God's vocabulary. 26 million souls in the SoCal district. 26 million. What is 1% of 26 million? 260,000. Is that right? That's right. 260,000. The city that I pastor in, your district superintendent, it just happens to have a population of 260,000. It just happens. And a prophecy came in our church some months ago, probably six months ago, that God is going to give us a harvest of 2,600 souls. I'm believing that for every church in the SoCal District, a harvest of 1% of your town's population. If you accept that and embrace that challenge, would you stand to your feet? Say, I'll believe God for 1% of my town's population. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Who's already figured out what that is for your town? Anybody already figured that out? Anybody? What is it for your town? 1,650 people. Amen. Thank God for our new United Pentecostal Church, pastored by Darren Sargent Escondido. 1,650 people. Thank God for that. We got a 1,600 member church right there. Amen. Who else? What's the population of your town? One person. That's, that's the population? 32,000? So 1% is 3,000 3, Somebody help me with math here. 320? 320 people. That's the population of your church. 1% to save a city. Praise God. Hallelujah. We can do this. We go together, we grow together, and we gather together. Remain standing at your section conferences. It'll come up on the screen here. We're going to bring you the new SoCal District Go to Grow Playbook. This is the cover of the new SoCal District Go to Grow Playbook. We will go together, grow together, and gather together to reach all 26 million souls that the Lord has entrusted to us in the harvest field of the SoCal District. He's called us to the kingdom for such a time as this. When we do all we can do, I truly believe, for God, He will then do what only God can do. When I do all I can do for Him, He will do what only He can do for me. Let's thank God for the coming revival and harvest. 26 million souls are going to be reached with that super. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You're the God of this city. You're the king of these people. You're the lord of this nation. You are. You're the light in this darkness. You're the hope to the hopeless. You're the
praise you, Lord Jesus. Remain standing just a moment, and we're going to enter into our ordination service. But I would first of all like to introduce to you our new ministers. And I would like you to come forward with your spouse, family, if they're here with you. Would you come and stand in the front, please, facing the audience? Jared Ellis. Are you here, Brother Ellis? All right. Uh, Nathaniel Rodriguez. Would you come forward, please? Are you here, Brother Nathaniel Rodriguez? All right. Mark Walters. Brother Mark Walters, would you come forward, please? Brother Efren Garibay, would you please come forward, wife and family? All right, we are thankful for four newly licensed ministers in our district, and we also have one new upgrade from a local license to general license. If you are here, would you please come forward, Brother Sergio Gonzalez? Are you here, Brother Sergio Gonzalez? Not here. All right. Well, we want to introduce these new ministers to you, and I have a surprise for them. We are going to present to you, well, to one of you. One of them has come in. <laughs> We're going to present to Brother Mark Walters his ministerial certificate. And yours is still on the way, Brother Efren. All right. Congratulations. Let's congratulate these new ministers. Thank you. Please get to know them. Amen. Our ordination, we'd like to call up Brother Nathan Coopley and his wife and family. And if you would come, please, and stand in front of the podium. Amen. Our audience may be seated. God bless you. Brother Nathan Coopley has met the requirements and been approved by our district board for ordination. And we are happy that this is taking place at his home church. Uh, if you don't know this family, Nathan Coopley's father, Jonathan Coopley, pastors this local church in El Monte and also serves as our section four presbyter. Brother Nathan Coopley also serves our district currently as our North American Missions Promotions Director. Amen. And how many of you, how many of you are wearing NAM socks tonight? That's what I thought. I knew some would be wearing NAM socks tonight. How many of you own a pair of NAM socks? All right. Well, that was for the Nathan Coopley's idea. And he's the promo director for North American Missions. You are entering the highest level of ministry recognition that we have in the United Pentecostal Church International. From a local minister to a general licensed minister to now being ordained. The Apostle Paul said in 1 Timothy 1 and 12, And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. It is a sacred moment and a privilege for us to participate today in the ordaining of this man with his family standing at his side into the ministry. Paul also said to Timothy, let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery, which will take place in a moment. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Rebuke not an elder, 
but entreat him as a father, and the younger men as brethren, the elder women as mothers, the younger as sisters with all purity. And again, he writes to Timothy in chapter 1, verse 11, whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. Now, for some years, the man standing before us has been preparing for this day. In fact, I would say, even before he knew he was preparing for this day, God was preparing him for this day. Ministries are not self-called or self-appointed, nor do they send themselves. They always are sent by elders. The anointing always flows from above, and it never flows directly from God to the one being anointed. It always flows from God to his anointed to the one being anointed. Paul's charge to Timothy in 2 Timothy 4 fits this occasion well. He said, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lusts shall they heat to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. Paul also reminded us that who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. And then in the same chapter, he said, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves. We preach not ourselves. But Jesus Christ the Lord and ourselves servants for Jesus' sake. So I would say that when you attain the position that you stand in tonight of being ordained into the gospel. You've reached the ultimate level of servanthood. Indeed, Jesus said, he that would be chief will be servant of all. So it's just greater serving the Lord by ministering to his body. Our Lord Jesus Christ set the supreme example. He did not take up a scepter, though he could have. He did not take up a sword, he could have. But he took a towel. He took the symbol of a servant. And he washed others' feet. He even washed the feet the very night of the one who would betray him. He washed Judah's feet. He gave us the supreme example of serving others. The Lord Jesus did not convey upon us the name rabbi, master, father. He simply said we were servants. In the master's service, there's no higher calling than the high calling of servanthood. So I charge you, Nathan Cooperly, to continue seeking the high calling of servanthood. Three times in three epistles to the church, Paul says, walk worthy church is to walk worthy. But in Ephesians 4, he directs this to the ministry. And he said in Ephesians 4, 1, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you're called. You're not worthy. None of us are worthy. But all of us are admonished to walk worthy. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There's one body, one Spirit, 
even as we're all called into one hope of our calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, Father of all, who is above all, through all, in you all, but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. And he gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, the work of the ministry, the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, under the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. I would like for your pastor and your presbyter to present you this Bible, and I would like him to hold it, and you hold it, and you place your hand upon it. I would like the presbytery, please, to gather around behind this couple, this family. And I'm going to give you your ordination charge at this time. Please place your hand on the Bible. Please respond to each one of these questions. Are you truly called by God to the ministry? Are you fully persuaded that the Holy Scriptures your hand lies upon contains all doctrine necessary to be saved and that all of it is divinely inspired of God and you are determined out of said Scripture to instruct people committed to your charge? Will you give yourself to prayer, fasting, and diligent study that you may be a worthy example? Will you fashion yourself and your family according to the word of God and make yourself and them an example to the saints? Will you be ready always to minister to all men according to their need, physical or spiritual, whether they be rich or poor, educated or unlearned with no respect of persons? Will you ever and always put your ministry above all else at any cost? Will you faithfully preach and teach the whole counsel of God, including the new birth according to Acts 2.38, giving careful consideration always to the apostles' doctrine? Will you reverently obey God's admonition given to you by your district and national officials, submitting yourselves to their godly judgment with a right spirit? Will you endeavor to be loyal to your district? to the United Pentecostal Church, to its bylaws, to its articles of faith, including teaching and exampling the necessity of a holy life. And finally, will you faithfully support the United Pentecostal Church with your prayer, participation, giving on both district and national levels? Amen. Now, anointing always flows down and is conferred with the laying on of hands by the presbytery. So I'd invite you to step forward just a step or two and and kneel, and we're going to lay hands upon you and anoint you with oil, pray over you. The presbytery is going to gather and pray over you. We're going to ask for uh, Pastor Lopez, our North American Mission Director, to join here as you serve with him, and he has helped mentor you. And I'm going to ask our executive representative for this district conference, our North Central Regional Presbyter, Brother Mark Johnson, to come if you would. And if you would pray a prayer of dedication, consecration over them in the microphone while we lay hands and anoint them. Would you stand with me? Let's pray together. God, we thank you. Amen. For men and women, amen, who offer themselves to your service. God, I pray that your anointing would rest upon them. And I pray, God, that your hand would use them. God, that faith would arise. Amen. That faith would arise and journeys begin. Amen. That you would answer the prayer. God, that you would meet their need. Amen. That you would launch them. Hallelujah. Into more effective ministry, God. More effective faith, God. In the name of Jesus. God, I pray that your hand would be in their life. I pray, God, put your angels charge round about them. Amen. Let your spirit, God, gather round them. Amen. Lead and guide them, we pray. Hallelujah. Go in front of them, God, by your spirit. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
Amen. God, that your hand would do the work. Pray for this family, God. I pray for this wife and children, God, that your spirit would be with them, on them. Amen. Bind them together. Protect them, God. Hallelujah. Let their faith move. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Grow them, God. Let their faith grow. God, let the anointing grow, I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. this is. Uh, I've known this young man since he was born. And uh, he is the youngest of uh, three Coopley children, the very youngest. But he's got a beautiful family here, exemplifies and loves the Lord. And I just was told, I think today, that he's about to take a step of faith. I think this month or next month, that's what I understand, quit his job and, and go full-time in ministry. He's got quite a lucrative job, so that's a big step of faith. So keep him in your prayers. Amen. Amen. We're going to invite uh, this audience. Our district conference, as you know, is, is closed to ministers, families only. So it gives us a very intimate uh, kind of atmosphere here. And so everybody here is ministry and ministry family. We're going to invite you all to walk by and congratulate the Coopleys. Remember our schedule in the morning, 9 a.m. is Continental Breakfast in the Annex Building, 9.30 Prayer and Devotion. You don't want to miss the devotion. The district board is requested by the Danny Aber to bring a very special message entitled Second and Satisfied. It's a powerful message. You're going to receive that devotion time, 10 o'clock, some great exhortation. 11 o'clock begins elections, and it begins our ladies' session. So please, ladies, uh, be here uh, prior to, be here for the whole thing if you can, but for sure, uh, be here in time for the 11 o'clock ladies' session. And please stand, stay for the Johnsons uh, sharing with us in our last session before we go to a wonderful uh, lunch together. Amen. God bless you. Thank God for being our God. Hallelujah. Thank God for SoCal District. Lord, I give you my ladies' board, I need to meet you as soon as possible in the room over here. Give you 